Beautiful sunshine on this Friday morning. Live shot Century Plaza Hotel and Spa. And we'll stay outside. Back parking lot. 180 West 2nd. Gary Lewis from Phoenix Perennials back with us. Nice to see you, Gary. Good to be here. You're taking time off because spring season is here. I know you're busy. People are excited about gardening. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we look at spring planters and what we can do, baseline foundation soil is crucial. Yes, you need to start with good soil. So a friend of mine just came to me the other night and he said, Gary, none of my veggies are growing in all of my planters. And he's like, I think I got really, I, I, I skimped on the soil. I bought really cheap stuff and nothing's growing. So the very first thing you need to think about when you're doing, well, your garden, but as well as your planters is a good high quality soil. Because soil needs certain components to have that nice structure for your plants. But as well, you need air and water as well. There's air pour, pour, pours in the soil that holds water and air and that's really important for root health and plant health. So, so you need high quality soils. So take us through the three types of the, the difference here for those that are going So to this is just a nice general potting mix which would have peat and perlite in it which would be good for your uh, uh, pots in your garden as well as house plants. And then this is something that's a little bit richer. This is like a sea soil potting mix. This would be great for veggies and shrubs and things like that. So you can see it's darker and richer but it's still got the perlite for that nice drainage. Mm -hmm. And then if you're just top dressing your garden or if you've got really giant planters where you just want to scrape off a couple inches this is straight sea soil compost and you're just going to lay that on top a couple inches on top and that will keep your soil really healthy and happy and lead to successful plants no and when we have the soil down and now that we're in the spring season sunlight water how, how do those habits adjust into the new season um, in terms of frequency oh in terms of like uh, like well, fertilizing and stuff well, before and, we or, or the, all of this frequency well, for watering and all that for well it all really all depends you know you don't have to water that much quite yet but as we get hotter and you know we've had almost no rain through March yeah um, you're gonna have to be watering a little bit okay yeah but then we want to get into fertilizers because that's the next most important thing this is my favorite this is the lazy person's fertilizer or the smart person's fertilizer it's a slow release you apply once in April and it does the trick for three to four months so you're done fertilizing for the year but you can also use organic liquids or other liquids and you water once a week you had me at lazy person All when right. it comes to gardening so right? once you've got your foundations down you've got your fertilizers organized then you can get into thrill fill and spill uh, which is uh, kind of a mantra for designing a gorgeous pot on your patio and now is a great time to do something uh, for spring so we got thrills which are vertical things like this uh, New Zealand flax and uh, so we would just kind of pull that out you always want to rough up the roots just a little bit with your fingers just scrape them with your nails uh, it's kind of saying you know you're free now to reach out into the rest of the <laughs> soil because otherwise it might just stay that little clump so you want to just rip that up a little bit yeah. and then so we've got our thrill our big exclamation point and then we want to think about fills so fills are those things that kind of are nice and um, round and kind of sit on top now we have a bit of a thrill with this hellebore flower because it's vertical but all of these leaves are going to give us a fill that's going to fill in the space right above the pot we got two good ones over here on so the yeah side. so you've got a nice little fill a few fills there and, and, then, and what are these ones right here so you've got a wallflower right here which is fragrant which will bloom for months and then over here this gold leaf you've got a chorus or a sweet flag which is going to be evergreen year-round and give you that great uh, uh, great golden foliage. I've got a burgenia here, which is going to have some pink flowers. And we have this spill off the front. What yeah. are the uh, recommendations for the spill? So the spills, we've got a golden oregano right there, which yeah. is of course edible. You can harvest that as it spills over the edge uh, to uh, for your cooking. And then you've also got a winter green there with edible berries. And then I've got a little heather here, which is a little bit of a fill, maybe borderline spill. Now, of course, we wouldn't just stuff all these pots in there. We would pull them out of the pots, as I did with our New Zealand flax. And but let them roam free. They let them roam free. And now you've got a beautiful fill, thrill, and spill, or thrill, fill, and spill. Yeah. Um, and a beautiful, healthy, fabulous pot that's going to look great year-round. Well, you're running workshops as well for people that want to learn more about doing it and doing it well. Uh, uh, PhoenixPerennials.com for everything you want to know to get you set for spring gardening. Thanks so much for coming by. Thank you. Okay, Greg Harper, enjoying the sunshine too. Let's head to Canada Place.